King Tuff. Not to get confused with King Tut, an underrated, underappreciated band. The metalhead, punk rocking, coffee loving, hippie wizard Kyle Thomas started his solo project in the early 2000s. So today we're gonna see how this lo fi project started in the snowy terrains of Vermont and eventually slowly accumulated a cult like following that would take his project all the way to the sunny shores of Los Angeles. Sit back, relax, eat some popcorn. This is King Tut. A history. Kyle Thomas was born on January 18th of 1983 in a small town called Brattleboro, Vermont. Both of his parents were originally from New Jersey, but they went to college in Vermont. They would later be married and reside in Brattleboro. John Thomas, aka Old Man Tuffy, worked graveyard shifts at a mental institution and his mom, Judith Thomas, aka Little Smashy, worked with kids and she was an avid gardener. Kyle and his brother Luke were very close when they were younger. They both would play Little League together and when it would snow, they both would go snowboarding on their DIY snowboards, taking off the skateboard wheels of a skateboard and sledding down a hill with it. Their parents didn't play any musical instruments, but their dad would always be showing them new music. Kyle said the first musician that really grabbed his attention was Jimi Hendrix. After hearing some of Jimi Jimmy's songs and seeing him on videos, he knew he wanted to do something with music. Their dad would sometimes take them to the closest record store, which was about an hour away, and Kyle said he would always pick out records just based on their covers. Their dad would also take them to the local comic book shop. He had a huge collection since the 1970s, and Kyle and Luke would also get into comic books, especially superhero comics. His dad bought him a Stratocaster when he was in third grade. Kyle never took a lesson in his life. Life, and he didn't even try to learn how to play other people's songs. He just made up his own songs, and when he first started playing, he just played one string at a time. Around the fifth grade, Kyle was really into Green Day, given the band had just released one of their most popular records, Dookie, and Green Day would get him into the East Bay punk scene, like other popular bands like Operation Ivy, because Billy would always be wearing Operation Ivy shirts, and even covered their song Knowledge on their first record. Kyle's dad thought it was about time he took Luke and Kyle to their first concert. The venue was off Pearl Street and the band that was playing that night was called Serotonin of Conformity. Kyle said he doesn't really remember the concert except there was some guy swinging a chain in the mosh pit. Once Kyle reached middle school he would start his first band. They came up with the name Ludacris and this was way before the famous rapper Ludacris was a thing. After school they would always go to Mark's house who was the drummer of the band and practice. Their first show was at a school dance where Kyle would play his first song he ever wrote called Pickle Boy. The band would mostly play at their local teen center but sometimes at a hippie restaurant called the Common Grounds. Heading into high school Kyle was still playing baseball. He finally decided to quit because practice felt like a military drill and he decided to dive headfirst into music. He started recording music by himself in his parents bomb shelter. Since they were living in Vermont and the house was built in the 1920s, in the 50s to 60s era people were scared that the Cubans and Russians were gonna nuke the United States, so a lot of people built bomb shelters. He would start recording music around 12 midnight and wouldn't finish until 5 in the morning. He first started recording on a digital 8 track, and this was happening around 2002. He thought of the name King Tough and thought it was funny because it was a play on his initials. Kyle Thomas, King Tough. Anyway, he wrote down King Tough on a piece of paper and left it in his wallet. And one day he found it and he was like, hey, that would be awesome to put out music under the name King Tough. He recorded a couple albums and released them through CDRs. Only him and his friends have really heard these songs. His friends back home thought the early King Tough material is still the best material he has ever put out. His most notable unreleased released album was called Mind Blow, which was released through Spirit of Or Records. So I bought the Mind Blow CD off of this bootleg website. I'll put it in the link if you want to buy it. You can you can find some of these songs on YouTube, you just have to search pretty deep. 
you know, I could release all of these, but I don't really want to because it's Kyle's record, and if he wants to release it, then he can. But I gotta say, if you are gonna take a listen to this, I highly suggest buying it. Most of these songs would be re-recorded and released on his next LP, Was Dead. He even recorded the song Staircase of Diamonds, which wouldn't be released until 2014. This version was really slowed down, and it seems like he's just talking instead of singing. Also, the song Black Zelda was amazing. You can find this one on YouTube, but I really wish this was on Was Dead, because that's one of my favorite songs off of Mind Blow. It seemed like Kyle would always be taking breaks from King Tough, and it was really more of just a side project. He would play in other bands. He played in a reggae band in high school called Baked Earth for a minute. One of the most popular bands back then that he was in was an eight-man hippie folk band called Feathers. Not my favorite type of music, but it's not that bad. A record label in the area even put put their album out on vinyl. One of Kyle's first jobs was a dishwasher, and he said he quit that job on the spot because he had to make it to a gig that night. This band did stick around for a little bit and even went on a small tour. After high school, Kyle had no interest in going to college. He knew he wanted to do something with music. He decided to visit his solo project again. He bought an 8-track tape now instead of the digital version, and he felt like he could make the sound even better. He was sharing a dirty abandoned ballroom in Battleboro called Vegetable Street. And this is where he would record his first real LP, Was Dead. He recorded everything by himself, and he had a buddy named Ron who would help him burn everything to CDR. He wasn't expecting much. This was in 2006, and the garage rock scene wasn't blowing up yet. So again, he thought he would just burn this to CDR and hand it out to a couple of his friends and post it to MySpace. How I said, a lot of these songs were just re-recorded versions of Mind Blown. Was Dead was the fifth King Tough album he recorded. Although he never released those first four albums outside of handing out copies to a couple of his friends, he wrote most of these songs at his most favorite coffee shop called Mocha Joe's Cafe. He loves black coffee and is a coffee connoisseur, you could say. He did play a couple shows around Brattleborn, but his friends Matt and Kim asked him to go on a mini tour with them. Matt's brother Fletcher was actually a touring member with King Tough. Matt, Fletcher, and Kyle also played in a band before King Tough, and Matt played bass for a short time in that band. The lineup for the early King Tough tours consisted of Kyle on guitar and vocals, Fletcher, who also played guitar, one of their childhood friends, Caleb, who would play drums, and Joey Plunkett on bass. And Joey now sings in a band called Country Westerns. So on that tour, they were mostly playing backyard shows and college parties, but again, the garage rock scene wasn't blowing up. Their closest band that was doing anything similar to Kyle was Black Lips. Not that many people were interested in the songs and he didn't get a lot of good feedback from the tour. So the last show they played in New York, he started focusing on the other bands he was in, which included a stoner rock group called Witch, which included Jay Massis, the guitarist and vocalist of the grunge band Dinosaur Jr. Dave Sweetapple, who would play bass in the band Witch, was helping Jay reissue a lot of the old Dinosaur Jr. records. Jay was also playing drums in a Led Zeppelin cover band, but he didn't really like it. Dave actually knew Kyle from the record store Kyle was working at, called Mediterranean Music. Dave suggested that Jay, Kyle, and him start a band together. So they all met up at Mediterranean Music and decided to form the band Witch. Kyle was vocals and guitar, Jay was the drummer, and Dave was the bass player. Kyle was 22 at the time and still living with his parents, so he offered to practice in their bomb shelter. Witch would go on to release two albums, their self-titled album in 2006 and Paralyzed in 2008. Luke Thomas, Kyle's brother, would actually help design the album art for these albums. Witch would go on tour, and they still tour to this day. I think their last tour was 2018-2019, but they haven't released any new music. The other band Kyle was more dedicated in was called Happy Birthday, which included Ruth Garbus and Chris Weissman. This band wasn't as big as Witch, but they still would go on small tours. So while Kyle is dabbling in these other bands, the year is 2008, two years after his release of Was Dead. A small record label called Colonial Records stumbled upon Kyle's LP, and they thought it was amazing, so they wanted to re-release it through their sister label called TP Records. Kyle was thrilled of course for the opportunity and he re-released was dead on august 20th of 2008 through tp records he named the album was dead because his solo project king tough was supposed to be dead so king tough 
was dead, but not anymore because a label picked it up and re-released it. So after the release through the label, it gained a lot more attention and more people were interested in this King Tough band. Midwest Lo-Fi is how you can describe this album. Influences all over the place from Bob Dylan to CCR to Buffalo Springfield. And this album isn't lo-fi blowing your headphones out fuzz. And the intro track Dancing On You just pulls you in. Once you hit the next song, Connection, you hear that early 2000 ringtone on the intro. He's pretty much talking about a girl saying they have the connection, but not just over the phone, but in life. The song Sun Medallion, which really gained Tuff a lot of attention, with the fuzzy acoustic guitar intro and him wailing about he can't go anywhere without his Sun Medallion. He actually bought that Sun Medallion at the old thrift shop he was working at. It was run by a bunch of crazy ladies who believed in witchcraft, and he said he even bought like a $400 guitar pedal there for $5. Kyle said he was inspired to write Sun Medallion right after he had a dream that he was in a subterranean graveyard. He was in like a tomb that was covered with moss and a ray of sunshine was the only thing that fell through and he said it was the most peaceful moment of his life at that time. This song gives me a lot of Bob Dylan vibes, and it just describes the type of character this King Tough guy is. The next song, Lady, which is one of my favorite songs on the album, has a sick intro lick. The song is about if his girlfriend is faithful or not, and he is getting high to numb himself, and his girlfriend is doing cocaine. The next song, Ruthie Ruthie, in my opinion, is the heaviest song from the bunch, with the static buzz and then the roaring guitar lick in the intro. I'm pretty sure he's talking about his bandmate Ruth in Happy Birthday. Simple lyrics that just keep repeating, Ruthie Ruthie, you're the coolest thing. The next song, Just Strut, is another one of my personal favorites. The guitar riff in it reminds me of a Chuck Berry song. He's saying, my love, I'm just trying to find my sweetheart. It also has a cool little guitar solo in the middle of it too. The next song, Kind of Guy, seems like he's talking about how he doesn't want to just be another hookup for this girl, and he wants to hang out with her and maybe have a relationship with the girl. Freak When I'm Dead seems very spiritual at first. When he dies, he wants to be cremated, wearing his favorite clothes and his favorite rings and accessories. I'm not sure which religion believes it, but I know one religion believes what you're buried in is what you're going to take to the afterlife. And it's cool because you can hear a harmonica in this one as well, definitely giving more southern twang to it. Overall, this is a very strong garage rock album. Even the early days in the garage rock scene, no one was making songs like this, especially all the way in Vermont. There was actually a bonus track on the clone Records release called Cinnamon Girl. This song sounded like a Beatles song and was very fuzzy and lo-fi. There was about three different recordings of the album Was Dead. As I stated before, Kyle released it in 2006 and the CDR had a hand silk screened cover over it, which was really cool. And it had a completely different recording of Kind of Guy and a slower version of Animal. Beside opening with Dancing on You and closing with So Desperate, the song order on the CDR is different from later releases. I'm gonna skip ahead really fast to 2013, and when Burger Records released the remastered versions of the Colonial Record mixes, it sounded a little bit different and a little bit cleaner. And these are the versions that appear on the current streaming platforms. If you're trying to get into King Tough, some people say this is the album to do it on. Personally, not for me. I do like a lot of these songs, but I don't think it's his best. Kyle has a unique voice compared to others in the music scene. They released four times as many CDs and cassettes than he did on his last album, Mind Blow. Kyle said he didn't even make that much money off of the CDs and cassette sales, and most of them would be sold on eBay. Kyle would still play some shows as King Tough, but he still would tour with his band Happy Birthday. They even played some of the newer King Tough material on the Happy Birthday tours. King Tough played a one-off show at South by Southwest, and the label Sub Pop was there. They were interested in releasing Kyle's music. Kyle had just recorded a new record with his band Happy Birthday, so he sent over the tape to Sub Pop. He said they didn't even listen to the full album, but they released it anyway. And they released it in 2010. How I talked about Burger Records before, Sean and Lee, the owners of Burger Records, reached out to Kyle and they called him while he was at band practice for happy birthday once and they talked to him and said they wanted to re-release Was Dead. So they re-re-released it in 2013 and they sold a bunch of cassettes, vinyls, and CDs. Sean and Lee said that Was Dead was the 16th album that they've put out. And over the years, Kyle would become really good friends with the Burger Boys, and he would play festivals like Burger Rama and Burger Bungaloo, even playing a live show at the Burger Records shop. And Alex from the Make 
blackout party played drums and Matt from Audacity helped play guitar. The hipster music blog Pitchfork even gave Was Dead best new reissue. I did a whole video history on Burger Records and the fall of Burger Records if you want to check it out too. Anyway, Kyle's band Happy Birthday would eventually go on hiatus and take a break. Ruth and Chris were sick of touring. So then again, Kyle went back to his King Tough project. In 2011, he released a split single with the Hex Dispensers. He released the song called Hands. This was recorded way back in the Mind Blow days. Very distorted with repetitive lyrics, but going into the year 2012 is when I believe King Tough became King Tough. Tough released a lot of songs throughout 2012. In the spring, on April 3rd of 2012, Kyle released an EP slash single called Called Wild Desire through a Seattle label called Suicide Squeeze Records. The album cover was very unique. It consisted of Kyle's friend Abby Banks who toured with King Tough and she sold their merch. She was dancing around the room one time and Kyle decided to take a picture and he thought it would be funny for an album cover. The two songs Wild Desire and Hole in My Head were really strong songs. I felt like they were louder than Was Dead. It leaned more to the garage rock side of things than adding any bluegrass roots to it. But Wild Desire is one of my favorite songs that they've released. So going further into 2012, Kyle just made the jump from Vermont to LA. And he first resided in Laurel Canyon before moving to Echo Park later on. When he was on tour, he would always reach LA. And again, he became really good friends with the guys from Burger Records and everyone within the scene, including Ty Siegel, which would become one of his best friends. He would even fill in and play guitar for some of the Burger bands, like Hunks and his Punks. Kyle would also be releasing a full LP in 2000. 2012, his self-titled. He recorded it with a real producer, Bobby Harlow from The Go. Kyle was skeptical because he didn't want anyone ruining his songs, but after all, it was a really good idea. This album was recorded at Malcolm X Academy in Detroit, Michigan. It was an abandoned all-boys school that was supposedly haunted, but it was mostly mastered at Golden Mastering in Ventura, California. Kyle also had Magic Jake help play bass, and he met Magic Jake through the burger scene, and Magic Jake would eventually tour with King Tough. Kenny Tudrick would help play drums for this album, but I don't think he ever toured with KT. On May 29th of 2012, Sub Pop and Burger Records released King Tough's self-titled album. It had the same idea as Was Dead, cleaned up a little bit, but of course still had that rock and roll genre and didn't stray away to the pop side of things like many other bands. The album kicks off with the song Anthem. He said it was supposed to be like a reverse national anthem, with lyrics being a song of the dead, sing the love song that rots in your head. And this song is a great intro track. It just pulls you in with the killer riff, especially with the amazing album cover art with the bat, with skull, with devil horns, and the magic wand, and the SG guitar, which would become one of King Tuff's favorite guitars. Luke and Kyle both did the artwork for the album. The only bubblegum pop song I would say on the album is Alone and Stoned. He's basically talking about how all his friends are just alone by themselves, listening to music and stoned. Very relatable right now with the whole COVID situation. The song's intro melody sounds identical to Just Strut. One of the songs off Was Dead. And personally, I have listened to this song stoned and holy fuck I highly suggest it. I really like the vocals in it because the vocals are very different from any of the other tracks he's ever done. The next song, Keep On Moving, it slows it down a little bit, but it's not my favorite. I don't like the lyrics in it. It just kind of sounds childish to me. The song Unusual World and Evergreen sounds like something that would have been written with his band Happy Birthday. I know he even played Evergreen a couple times with Happy Birthday Live. There were slower songs, but not my favorite, especially Evergreen. He's never released a song like that before. But the album comes back strong with the song Bad Thing, which is one of the most popular songs and one of my favorite songs off the album. He talks about when he plays his Stratocaster, he feels like a kid, and when he's looking in the mirror, he feels like shit in a way, because he's living the same life, living in Vermont, not being productive, and just going through the motions. And deeper into the album, there's a song called Baby Just Break, and you can hear the Bob Dylan influence on this song. This was one of the last songs he wrote while in Vermont in the winter. Again, it's the same idea of stuck in a rut, unproductive, doing nothing with his life in a way, and he's saying baby just break in a sense of I want to break through the wall and be something different and move on from Vermont. The song Stranger also gives me another southern twang rock vibe. He's singing about being antisocial, and while everyone else is out having fun, he's just by himself. 
The transitions from song to song in this album go together very accordingly. If you have this album on shuffle, it's gonna sound weird from transition to transition, especially the transition to the song Hit and Run. I get Leonard Skinner vibes from this song. You hear the piano in the background and it just sounds like a southern jive. Seems like this album revolves around transitioning from Vermont, going to Los Angeles, and he said he thought Los Angeles was a really shitty place with celebrities and stars and everyone was really stuck up, but once he got there and met with the burger guys, everything was cool and he really enjoyed it. This album was well received by fans. And King Tough would release another two singles on September 10th of 2012 called Screaming Skull and Love Potion. These are decent songs. Love Potion to me sounds like a Green Day song, especially what Green Day was trying to do back in 2012 with their Uno Dos Trey. Kind of sounds like a song that would be off of one of those albums. Screaming School sounded a little bit different, but kind of similar. Not my favorite singles he's ever released, but fuck it, the album art was pretty cool. After this, Tuff would be touring non-stop for the years to come, and he had a new lineup. Who played bass for him was Magic Jake, and Garrett Goddard on drums, which his nickname was Old Gary, and sometimes they would have Craig Brown play guitar as well. They would eventually tour almost all of Europe, and they would play Primavera in Spain in 2013, and they even released a live album in 2013 called Live at Third Man Records. Their popularity would grow and grow and which would lead them to record their best album ever. On his next upcoming album, Kyle would dive headfirst into the rock genre. He jumped back into the studio with Bobby Harlow again and they recorded this at Studio B in Los Angeles. Going into this record, Kyle said he didn't have a whole lot of material to work with and this was the first record he really collaborated with the whole band on. And on September 23rd of 2014, Black Moon Spell was released through Sub Pop and Burger Records. And to kick off the album, we have the title track, Black Moon Spell, and this one grabs you in. I remember when I first heard this, I was like, fuck, this sounds something that Sabbath would have recorded. Even the lyrics go into a dark aspect. Drinking witch's brew and someone putting a curse on you. The way the drums sound on this song are completely different from the rest of the album. It gives me a live aspect, and I know Ty Siegel did record the drums for this song, and I feel like this song resembles the album cover that Luke Thomas did for this record. You got the evil witch looking in the background with the crystal ball. If you're gonna check out any King Tough song, this is the song to start out with. The next song, Sick Mind, is also really good. Seems like he's talking about a punk rock chick that's kind of fucked up in the head, likes a lot of sex and drugs, and is wild and crazy. And then the song Headbanger, which really stood out to me. I love the intro, it sounds like some guy's distorted voice. He's talking about this cute metalhead chick that listens to Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, and Slayer, and when she bangs her head in a mosh pit or just to a song, the narrator's love goes to 11 and he's referencing an amp on an amplifier that you plug a guitar in. The highest setting is 11. Beautiful Thing is talking about another girl and that is another top song on this album for me. And then it's funny, it transitions from Beautiful Thing to I Love You Ugly. But he's talking about her physical appearance saying, I don't care if you hate your face, you smell like toxic waste, I still love you. It's the most comedic song that Kyle has ever written. He said they recorded this last minute and decided to throw it on the album. The song Magic Mirror goes back to the voodoo and witchcraft side of the album, talking about black cats, bats, and changing shapes in the magic mirror. The solo and guitar riff is also really cool. The song Madness seems like the Kyle Thomas anthem. The drums even sound like a marching beat, and the lyrics even more. King Tough is my name, I've got madness in my brain, pleased to meet ya, I'm gonna eat ya, I'm batshit insane. The next song, Demon From Hell, is a quick one and a half minute punk song. Not really sure what the lyrics are talking about, but I just love the sound of it. It's fast, a minute and a half, and it just hits you. Then it transitions to the next song, Black Holes in Stereo. This song is okay, it's a comedic song. Lyrics like, boys and girls come from outer space, and so does music too. I learned more working at the record store than I ever did in high school. And then it jumps into the song, Radiation, which is just a filler song, no lyrics. Then it jumps into, I of the muse and this is another top song on this album it has a nice riff in the beginning and it seems like he's talking about a girl he's looking into the eyes of his muse and muse meaning a source of inspiration either a girl or a place or anything really but it seems like it might be a girl because his whole album is talking about a punk rock metalhead chick 
and how I was talking about earlier, it transitions into Staircase of Diamonds. This actually sounds better on this album than it did on Mind Blow. I like his vocals in this and I like the extra production he put into it. And then the last song, Eddie's Song. I really enjoy this one. It's a nice catchy beat. Instead of ending on a low sad note, it's a little bit more uplifted. And I don't know who the fuck Eddie is. Maybe Eddie Van Halen, maybe Eddie Money. Hell, maybe even the mascot from Iron Maiden, Eddie. Maybe even the Cartoon Network show, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Seems like the song is talking about some teenage rebel kid. The guitar lick throughout the song sounds like a Chuck Berry riff. And that wraps up the whole album. And in my opinion, this was the best album that Kyle ever put out. And I know a lot of people agree with me saying most of these songs are very, very strong songs. But Pitchfork gave this a 6.4, the lowest rating that King Tough has ever received. I don't care what Pitchfork says. This is the best King Tough album. So again, Tough would tour like crazy after this record. And he even recorded a live album album with Ty Siegel in 2015 called Live at Picaton, including the song called She's on Fire, which was originally released on Mind Blow. Also in 2015, they would release a song called Biggest Hearts. Sounds like something that could have been recorded off their last record, Black Moon Spell. Kinda disappointing cause this song is not on any music platforms and it's a really good song. After the repetition of touring and writing an album and touring, Kyle said he started losing his identity in a sense. He slowly became this King Tough character and people saw him as a party animal and a rocker and a guy who drinks and does drugs. Kyle said he used to smoke weed and he does drink on occasion, but he never even touched cocaine. Kyle even said the last record he recorded, Black Moon Spell, felt like it was forced and he was putting something out that people wanted to hear. So he went on hiatus in a way and didn't really play any shows through 2016 to 2017. He did tour with the Ty Siegel band and helped fill in. He even helped Ty write a couple songs for his new upcoming record. He would eventually move houses and he started building his own recording studio. He was writing a ton of songs and he knew the next record he would put out, he didn't want to have any producers touching it. Bobby recorded the last two records Kyle put out and he thought he was a great producer but he wanted to do something himself, something that he could control and he didn't want to put out another forced rock and roll album. He would also part ways with Magic Jake, Garrett, and Craig. Kyle started writing every song on an acoustic guitar. He said he wanted to play solo shows at first. He hasn't really done that before, and he said he was terrified to do it since it would be him alone. He said he really got into a lot of funk music during this time, and since he finally had his home recording studio, he started recording there almost every single day. And just like Was Dead, he recorded recorded this whole album by himself, other than the drums, which were split between Ty Siegel and Charles Moonheart, and a couple of his friends sang the backing vocals on some of the songs. And finally, on April 13th of 2018, King Tuff released his most unique record that he's ever put out, The Other through Sub Pop Records. It took Kyle four years to record and release his new album. First off, to distinguish this album from any of the others, look at the album art. For the past three albums that King Tough has put out, all three kind of look alike in a sense, with the colored background, with the sketched art on the front. Similar, very, very similar. Obviously different designs, but you get the point. Anyway, with the other, it's just a picture of Kyle with a shining star above his head. And Kyle is also wearing a wizard's hat. And if you didn't know Kyle is a hat connoisseur, you will not really see him that often without his hat. This album kicks off with the self-titled track The Other. And you know right away you're not sure what to expect. With the weird bike chime intro and the organ playing in the background, and eventually the synths come in, the song honestly sounds kind of depressing. Even the lyrics, the narrator is down on his luck but near the end of the song, he finds himself. I'm not really sure what the other is meaning, maybe a partner in life, but it also seems like it's something way deeper than that. The next song is the most different song that he's ever recorded, Raindrop Blues. It was funk inspired and it brought new elements into the song, including a saxophone. I don't really like this song, but it is very popular amongst the fans. The next song, Through the Cracks, is the best song on the album. I just love the way this one was put together and the live version is also really good as well. 
Kyle said the song was about one of his good friends who passed away in Vermont, and I love how he describes it as we all fall through the cracks, as in we'll all die one day. It's the most poetic song on the album and is just beautiful. The song Psycho Star is similar to Raindrop Blues. Kyle said this song was about humanity being a disease on Earth, and he's trying to have a perspective of an alien from outer space looking down on Earth and how awful we all are. Kyle does believe in aliens. He said he had an encounter with a UFO when he was about 10 years old. He was standing outside and near the top of a mountain he saw these bright lights hovering in the sky. He said they were just hovering there and not moving and then within a blink of an eye they flew off. The next couple songs on the album seem like filler songs. Ultraviolet is one of my other favorite songs on the album. I love the fuzz on the guitar in the beginning of it. It's probably the closest thing that he's ever recorded before. Never Ending Sunshine was written with Ty Siegel one night when they both were drunk off of cocktails. Kyle said they just freestyled it and it really worked out. Kyle said he was trying to base it off the sun god. He references the sun in most of his songs, stating all the way back to Sun Medallion off of Was Dead. The last song, No Man's Land, again sounds like something you would hear at a gospel meeting. He started the album off with the church organ and now he ends ends the album with the church organ. Kyle said it's a vision of the afterlife where your journey will eventually lead you. This album was very therapeutic for the king. He needed to find himself in life and I think he did with this album. I do enjoy this album. I don't enjoy it as much as some of the other ones. The thing I like that he did with this is he didn't try to sell this to the mainstream pop culture media like some of the other bands that are trying to make a fast buck. He did this from the heart and I really respect that. It's also really cool to see that some of these songs are his most popular songs on Spotify. Usually when an artist releases new stuff, they never make the top five. So after this record, Kyle would go on tour with a whole new lineup, sometimes him playing guitar, sometimes him just singing and playing whatever the fuck this thing is. His lineup through 2018 to 2019 consisted of Nicole Lawrence on lead guitar, Evan Taylor on drums, Aiden Young on bass, and Sam Ashworth on keyboard, and she used to be a member in Cherry Glazer. He would go through more lineup changes throughout 2019 to 2020, but as you know, COVID hit and touring stopped. Not that I think Kyle really minded that much because again, he'd rather just write the songs than tour. How I said before, Kyle was writing songs with Ty Siegel and he did help him write the song I'm Free that was released off Ty Siegel's album Freedom Goblin in 2018. Kyle re-recorded his own version and I think Kyle's version is better than Ty's. The song sounds like something that would be off of a Bob Dylan record or even a Led Zeppelin acoustic song. It's a very peaceful song and it seems like a good song to drop acid and walk through the woods to. You would really connect with nature. And for the future of King Tough, who really knows what's gonna happen? Kyle might take another four year break. Especially with COVID, I know it's pushing a lot of release dates for albums. But I would not sleep on King Tough. I would be very interested in hearing what their next record is gonna sound like. I feel like Kyle is probably put to rest his rock and roll days. If he's gonna record more music like the other, I'm gonna be very intrigued to listen. Ugh, all right, haven't done this since last year, but let's get into some useless facts. Kyle did release remixes of Psycho Star and Raindrop Blues with Meryl Garbus, and she worked at Mocha Joe's back in Vermont, and she did play in that reggae band with him I talked about. As I said before, Kyle is a coffee connoisseur, and he brought an Aeropress on tour once, and I think he brings it on every tour now. He is also a hat connoisseur, and he buys hats on eBay all the time. I love his weird wizard hat and his gem hat, whatever fucking hat this is. He said he has a bunch of raccoons around his house, and he feeds them all the time. He even wrote a song called Danger Dark for a Captain Morgan commercial. Once Kyle gets old and gray, he said he wants to draw in oil paint for the rest of his days. So let's jump into my top five favorite songs by King Tough. So starting out number one, we got Just Strut off of Was Dead. And number two, we got Alone and Stoned off of the self-titled. And then on Black Moon Spell, we have Black Moon Spell. And then we have Wild Desire off of the single. And then we have Through the Cracks from the Other. Highly suggest checking out King Tough. He's a hell of a musician. He seems like a crazy person. And anyway, guys, I hope...